Okay. Um, so it is 5.45 Pacific time, so I'm going to get started. Um, so my name is Jillian. I am Senior Director of Development at Pure Health Exchange, so I work here on the external affairs team. And I have a very sad news that Sam, who was our host and moderator, actually got the flu. So, um, so you're stuck with me, which like is like, not a good substitute at all. And I will do my best to like really just use that extra space that we have um, to highlight our awesome panelists because I think they have um, so much wonderful things to say and I'm really excited to hear from them. Um, so just a few couple of quick announcements. So again, um, for folks who just joined, you're automatically muted. So if you're trying to talk and you're wondering why you can't hear anything and nobody hears you, it's because you're automatically muted, it's, it's okay. Um, what you can do is if you're on, I know we have at least 29 attendees right here on the Zoom. So if you're on the Zoom, you can chat. And I know some folks are already chatting, so you can chat questions, comments, go ahead and do that. Um, if you're on the phone, you can also call in. Um, and so the phone number, uh, or sorry, call in, you're already calling in. You can also email me. Um, my email address is gpressman at purehealthexchange.org. And um, if you have email questions, so again, folks on the phone, you can email questions, gpressman at purehealthexchange.org. Otherwise, if you're on the computer, you can chat questions as we go. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of um, kick off, this is 45 minutes, so it'll go pretty quickly, but just like give our panelists a chance to share um, some background on themselves and I have a few questions for them. And then I wanna actually open the floor for your guys' questions. Um, so also highlight that this is our very first webinar that we're doing for Peer Health Exchange alum and friends, and so we're really excited to uh, see how it goes and get your feedback as we do this. Um, so let's, without further ado, let's get started. So um, I would just love to hear, have just a quick spiel from all our panelists. If you could introduce yourself, uh, what you currently do, and favorite thing about PHE. So just a very quick <laughs> uh, who you are, what you currently do, and your favorite thing about PHE, and then we'll get more into the meat of this discussion. So um, let's start with uh, Jasmine. Do you think you're ready to go? I think I'm ready to go. Um, so hi, my name is Jasmine Bland. Um, I am a Tufts PHE alum, so I'm over on the East Coast and Boston area. Uh, I currently work for the state of Massachusetts as a policy associate at the Health Policy Commission, which is the state agency that oversees uh, cost containment uh, and helps set some of the policy priorities for the Commonwealth. Um, so I've spent some time with state government, with federal government, um, not, ooh, go Bows, yes. Um, <laughs> um, uh, with state government, federal government, nonprofits and the like. Um, so I've kind of gone in a bunch of different directions with public health and health policy. Um, and my favorite thing about PHE um, I don't know any other organization that has as strong a sense of community as PHE, even as an alum. I still hang out with friends that I made when I was a volunteer. I still am involved with PHE, of course. Um, and it's just so cool that the, the same feeling that you get um, when you're a volunteer and you're like teaching in the classroom and you get super revved up about it, that, that doesn't go away once you're an alum. So it's a very cool group of people to be a part of. Awesome. Um, let's kick it to Michael. Hi, everybody. My name is Michael Cullen. Um, I did peer health exchange at Boston College. Um, was an LC there in the drugs group back when it was sort of a uh, specific topic by topic uh, organizational structure. Um, currently, I work at a company called Oxian Partners that invests in healthcare companies and helps sort of build the teams for those healthcare companies. Um, and I am our head of operations. And we do that out of New York City uh, in San Francisco. And my favorite part about Pure Health Exchange is how quickly it resonates with people when you explain it to them. Um, so many organizations and philanthropic nonprofits, et cetera, you have to really get to the point. But with Pure Health Exchange, it just clicks with people so quickly. Um, and it just, you know, it's great to be part of an organization where you can drive that sort of impact, but it's also very easy to sort of explain. Uh, how you do drive that impact. Awesome, and Paris. 
Hi, everybody. My name is Paris Diaz. I'm a first year medical student at Charles Drew UCLA Joint Medical Education Program. I was a LC at San Francisco State University for two years and then an HE um, in my first year where I taught um, abusive relationships. Um, my favorite part of health ed, um, peer health exchange has to be the gear, I would say. Like their colors are amazing, the shirts, the hoodies, like people had hats, the chapstick. I thought that was like so amazing, but also um, I would say their unwavering mission and commitment to underserved communities is like amazing. And it's just like always motivational to be around people for peer health exchange because they're also genuine. Awesome. Um, and I do want to actually give Taylor, um, see Taylor on the screen here, just a quick chance to introduce yeah. yourself. Taylor's sort of jumping in as my co-host and facilitator <laughs> here. So, Hi, everyone. I'm Taylor Gramps. I'm the New York City Development Director. And in my job, I spend my time bringing partnerships and resources to the New York City um, chapter of Peer Health Exchange. And my favorite thing about PHE is a combination of all three of the answers. I'm cheating because I went for. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so the first question um, um, actually is for all of you. Um, and then I have specific questions for each of you. So the first question I have is um, what skills have um, you built through P what skills did you build in PHE that you currently use in your career today? So what skills did you build in PHE that you're currently using? Um, so whoever's ready to start can jump in, then I'll ask you all to give an answer. Uh, I'm happy to start. Um, I think there are a lot of skills that are kind of straightforward with PHE, some of the public speaking skills and things like that. But I think it's really important to really reflect on all of the different facets of the PHE experience. So not just the classroom management and the kind of straightforward teaching skills, but also when you're up there with another teacher, with another volunteer, and you're leading a classroom, like that level of teamwork is incredibly important to be able to feed off of each other's energy and to kind of think on your feet. Um, I think whenever I go into a job interview or something like that, the first thing I talk about is my experience as a CC and how that project management and that working on a team and that listening to other people's um, opinions and kind of coming to consensus. I think some, that's some of the strongest skill building that I've had in, in any experience that I had in college. And I still use those skills today for sure. Yeah, Jasmine, that really resonates with me. I had, I had sort of thought of the, the communication based ones and the public speaking and things. But um, in my role today, a lot of what I do is uh, organize meetings and, and plan agendas and make sure that, you know, basically plan for, for conversations that are going to happen and, and ensure that those conversations happen and we reach those, reach those conclusions. And it's very akin to what being an LC is and, and knowing that you have a meeting coming up next week and you got to figure out what's an hour, an hour and a half of content and, and things that will both be enjoyable for your group, but also kind of move the needle forward on whatever you're trying to accomplish. So that's definitely one. And then, you know, in any career, active listening, communication, and just having empathy and just exercising that as a, as a skill, uh, I think is, is super valuable in all things I took away from the entire PhD experience. Yeah, I completely agree with everything. I think communication and also um, teamwork is very vital in peer health exchange. Like you can't do everything on your own. You have to ask for help sometimes. And I think that's very important in all of our careers, knowing our limits and what our strengths are and knowing the strengths of others and being able to play onto that. I also think um, one of my favorite things I walked away with from peer health exchange was that in the beginning of our classes, we would set guidelines and rules. And my favorite was being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And as a medical student, especially at first year, um, I'm uncomfortable each and every day with all the amount of information we're learning. You know, in peer health exchange and just in these careers, you're going to mess up a lot. And we won't know everything that's important going and not shut yourself off because of that failure and use that opportunity to grow. Awesome. So I actually want to dig into that a little bit. Paris, um, can you talk about like what your, what was the behind your decision to pursue med school and how, um, you know, if at all, how did PHE help shape that decision? Sure. So my whole thing with medicine is just like, 
I like things that apply. I like facts, you know, I like, you know, the answer in this country is probably going to be the same answer in this other country. I like to be able to apply my thing to a lot of different, um, you know, things. Um, you know, health is a topic of concern for every person, like regardless of their race, gender, um, you know, social standing or even religion. It's the one thing that connects us. And I really believe that everyone deserves the equal chance to live like a normal life if possible. And Peer Health Exchange for me just gave me a platform to make change. You know, it gave me my own self sense of agency and it showed me like what I could be. Um, you know, if I kept on working hard and, and even as a doctor, you know, one of the most important things is education. You have to educate your patients. You have to educate your peers and sometimes you have to learn yourself. And I think Peer Health Exchange like humbled me and just showed me what I could be. Okay, I have to ask a follow-up question. Uh, <laughs> how specifically did it humble you and give you agency? I mean, those are very interesting. Well, it humbled me in the way that, like, I thought I was so good. I passed, like, my, my um, health educator test. And my first workshop was just, like, I did horrible. It was just so hard. Like, I arrived late. Like, I messed up my car. It was just so hard. And I wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. But I used that motivation to, like, just do better, like, next time. And also, um, I just remember like teaching a workshop and sometimes like you're just going to have bad days or like you think you're not reaching someone. And like, I remember a specific time, um, there was a student, very, very smart. And like, he kept on like arguing back and forth with me. And I was like, man, like he's so smart, but like, he's not agreeing with what I'm saying. And at the end, I felt really bad. And like, he came back up to me at the end and was like, you know, like, thank you for like actually caring you know, and actually giving him the attention that he, he required. But also in terms of agency, I think just the responsibility that Peer Health Exchange gives to his health um, educators, it's a big role to actually just go into a high school and teach a workshop. And having that responsibility, you know, matured me a little bit and also seeing the final product of, you know, the change that could be made at the end, you know, with that information um, just got me excited, you know. I have a question. Um, so for all three of you, you've gone into different um, aspects of the health industry. Do you talk about PHE in your job interviews? And if you do, how? Every time, every single time. I once walked into a job interview and that was the thing that I saw on my resume. It had been circled, circled, starred, like double, triple starred. I talk about it in every interview for like a, a thousand different reasons. The, like the skills that we've talked about building, but also just in terms of how, you know, I, and I think Paris has alluded to this, but I think the issue of health equity is so incredibly important to PHE's mission. And I think that's like a driving force for me and why I, I do public health work. It's a little bit different than the one-to-one -one clinician patient relationship, but more on a, on a broader kind of large scale policy lens and that's what drives me and so to be able to point to an experience that I had in college and an experience I'm still involved with today and say this is this is what matters to me this is the kind of change that I want to see in communities to show that kind of passion is incredibly valuable to, you know for an employer to see to be to be honest yeah I would agree I mean I I'm lucky enough where I've only interviewed for one job in the last uh, six years. Um, but in terms of just being able to connect it every day to, you know, the people that you get to help on the peer health exchange side and the impact that you get to drive. And as you see how, you know, healthcare policy and healthcare businesses are evaluated on their impact, um, it, it becomes pretty, pretty obvious just the impact that peer health exchange has in terms of getting to people before they're sick, getting to people before they make unhealthy decisions, um, and really being that sort of pivot point in, in their life where you can kind of set them up for a lifetime of health, which downstream, you know, will lead to so many different things. As Paris said, health is just so integral to anyone's success in anything, uh, as well as just uh, the kind of health and well-being of the, of the country. So... Uh, definitely think about periodic change a lot in that sense. 
I've used Peer Health Exchange for each one of my interviews, especially in regards to medical school interviews for my application. It was my personal statement. Um, specifically, um, for my UCLA interview, I had a group interview, and our project was to like create something with unlimited money, like a project or something like that. And I spoke about Peer Health Exchange, and I talked about my experience and what we do, and I basically recreated Peer Health Exchange. I just changed the, the group name to like Peer Health. Uh, mentorship or something like that <laughs> and I think that's one of the big reasons why I got accepted as medical school was because of how good that interview was but in addition to that um, for medical school I know that there are a lot of people interested in people with teaching experience it just shows a lot it shows that leadership quality about you it shows your patience it takes a lot of patience um, and just being able to dissem disseminate um, information you know in a concise and um, succinct way is a very great quality to have so Peer health exchange has been like my number one thing on most of my applications. Awesome. Um, so, and that did speak to, so thank you all for starting to put some chat questions in. Um, and one of them was working PhD into med school applications. I'm glad you touched on that. Um, so I wanna, this question actually is from Michael. Could you talk a little bit about like day in the life, your director of operations, health uh, consulting company, like what, what do you do on a daily basis? <laughs> Maybe thinking about sort of where we're at today. So Oxygen is kind of built like um, many different professional service businesses. So whether that's consulting or a law firm or some sort of investment firm where there's sort of the associates that come in that are right out of college, senior associates, directors, and sort of onward and upward. Um, so right now we're in the review process. So a lot of what I'm doing is kind of collecting a lot of data and information across the last six months of the period that, that, that those people have been reviewed on and helping their managers and helping the team sort of come up with decisions around, uh, you know, is this person going to get promoted? Is this person going to get this bonus, this, this that, or the other thing? Uh, so there's a bit of sort of people management and, you know, we're a people business and, and a essentially ensuring that that's all on track. Um, on the flip side of that, there's kind of a whole financial accounting, strategic planning element of it, um, where if we're gonna make this investment now and we have taxes coming in April, what is our cash balance gonna be in, in May? So it, it really runs the gamut and it's really, I think one of the reasons why I enjoy my job is that it's uh, in some ways like a liberal arts degree in business <laughs> because I, I'm not just an accountant or I'm not just a HR person or I'm not just a um, sort of IT person but I get to sort of dabble across all those things and have gotten to really learn a lot of the different pieces of um, running a business and growing a business um, so day in the life is is always been the hardest question for me because it, it again is that liberal arts kind of type job but um, just trying to keep the trains on the track, trying to make sure that we're, we're hitting all of our targets and uh, you know, doing everything that we aspire to do, I guess it's the easiest way to describe it. Awesome, and if there are folks on this call who are like, ooh, I want that, I want that liberal arts business thing for health, um, what advice would you give them about how to, how to get into a career like yours? Contact, okay. contact me. <laughs> okay, great. Um, for people with the skill set of a, of a pure health exchange person. No, no I, I say that in jest, but I think the associate role um, gets you a ton of exposure into, into all of healthcare and then also all of business. So part of that role is, uh, is sort of recruiting and, and bringing in executives in different healthcare companies. And so you learn a lot about the entire industry because you got to be able to talk to them. But then on a more businessy front, you get to learn, you know, what does a CFO do? What does a head of sales do? What does a chief marketing officer do? And as you have those conversations, for me, like having 50 conversations with people that were chief operating officers, I was like, I, that, that sounds like something I want to do. Um, and that's something that resonated with me. So, um, you know, outside of just like join my firm, um, I would say um, if you're trying to enter a career in healthcare and you want to go in as a generalist, I think like a public health um, route is good. You get to learn sort of a lot of different parts of the industry. I, I think, you know, there's so many different ways into healthcare and there's so many different ways to drive an impact beyond being the point of care. Um, Cause something that like Jasmine does, if she improves a policy in Massachusetts that 
reaches 50,000 people, that'll be sort of more lives than a do one doctor could ever touch. So there, I just think there's a lot of different ways in. That's not a very specific answer, but um, definitely lots of, lots of areas to drive impact in healthcare. Awesome. And, and one thing I did hear implicit in what you talked about was, um, you know, your job allows you to activate a network and connections, but also you can use those network and connections to like learn about other jobs and perhaps sure. pursue them. And so um, going back to Jasmine's original point about the PHE community would encourage folks to leverage their PHE community and network. And hopefully we're, we're trying to build that and be even more of a resource for you um, as you start to have conversations about what you might want to do and where you might want to go. Um, but Michael, you gave a good segue into Jasmine. So Jasmine, can you talk about what you do day in the life um, and similarly like points of advice for people who, who might want to get into your field and do something similar to you? Day in the life. Um, well, Part of my day in the life yesterday was having a cookie baking competition at work. It was very fun. Um, but no, it, the, most of the time, um, I'm so again, I'm working for a state agency that kind of oversees cost containment. So healthcare spending is going up. Um, how do you stop that and keep high quality care? Um, and so I think that is particularly interesting to me and I think connects to PHE in large part because I think cost containment and health equity are often two sides of the same coin. I think there are a lot of um, vulnerable populations that are not getting the care that they need and are, for example, high users of emergency departments. And so how do we get people high quality care that's also you know, not tertiary care? Anyway, so the point is, is that I work um, primarily in um, sharing lessons learned from the agency. So if we're working with grantees, um, or um, like a, a health system that has a certification from our agency or something like that. We're essentially collecting lessons learned from them and best practices in things like telemedicine and serious illness care and social determinants of health and trying to share that widely. Um, so it's a really awesome opportunity to kind of learn about what's going on across the state, not just in the city and kind of say, okay, so you know, really interesting work is happening in serious illness care. How do we make sure that the people in this part of the state and that part of the state are hearing about it and can kind of make it apply to their own health systems? Um, it's very exciting. I love it. Um, I think in terms of a piece of advice that I would give, I think it's really, really important um, to just try a little bit of everything, kind of dabble. I think it's, it's, you know, it's easy to kind of say, okay, like, this is what I'm going to do. And like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm in college and like, I'm just going to do it. And for some people that works out and for other people, it doesn't. And either way, just keep an open mind. I think kind of like what Michael was saying, this kind of liberal arts way of approaching things and trying all sorts of new things. I think, especially if you're interested in health policy or public health, um, it's such healthcare is so complicated it's important to know about what's happening from the health system perspective and a research pers researcher's perspective and a politician's perspective. And so continuing to keep an open mind and have informational interviews and um, ask your professors who they know that is nifty and like pick their brain about what's going on in the field and, you know, leverage your contacts at PHE, your program managers and all of the staff in the offices about who they know and, and um, you know, who they can connect you to. Um, if you're looking for internships, try internships and like a bunch of different things that you didn't expect um, that you'd be interested in. I had like a brief stint in development uh, and it's turned out to be kind of handy. Um, so yeah, just like keep an open mind, explore, don't be too hard on yourself when you're trying to figure out what you wanna do. You have a long career ahead of you to kind of dabble in all sorts of things, but having a broad knowledge base and a broad set of experiences really helps you to not only decide what you love and what you don't love, but also is just informative. I'd add to that too, that, that don't be afraid to reach out to people that just look interesting and, and ask them about themselves. Because people love, I mean, like at the three of us, people like talking about themselves. Um, and so if you ask someone and in a way that's not like really you know, thirsty for a job or thirsty for an internship, but are just like, hey, I'm interested in your career path. Looks like you went to the same college as me. 
would you have 15 minutes to talk? I, there's very few people that will turn that down. It's very flattering to receive a message like that. And, and uh, I wouldn't underestimate the power of that and, and where that might go and what advice that person might give you. Yeah. Shameless plug, talk to your program staff and ask about PHE alum. Like again, the PHE community is there and excited. So there are probably alum who are, you know, closer to like your age in the career path um, and don't seem kind of as intimidating as someone who's been like a CEO for the past like 25 years who can kind of give you some guidance. Um, yeah, so there's, there's more than just the three of us. So connect to other alum and get coffee with them or email them or whatever. Awesome. Um, and I just want to highlight for folks on the phone too, we have some chat conversations going, which is great. Um, Kendall asked a little bit more about the personal statement for med school and Paris, you wrote that um, you spoke about PHE in regards to commitment to underserved communities and your understanding of those communities. Um, you gave the advice to possible paint a picture of a moment in PHE that stuck out to you and use that to illustrate a characteristic you have and want to show schools that you possess. Can you tell us more about that, Paris? Because that's, that's super cool. Do you remember like what that moment was or if there's another similar that you would want to talk about? Yeah, I was actually pulling up my personal statement. It was that moment, but it was a lot better than how I mentioned it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can literally read it word for word. So um, in college, I engaged in a program called Peer Health Exchange. Under this program, I went to high schools in the neighboring impoverished communities and led workshops that their schools surprisingly didn't offer. During a visit to a school in East Oakland, I remember standing in front of a room, literally debating with a student. Normally in these situations, you know, we could have told students to save their comments for later, but instead of doing that, I decided to divert from my, you know, normal training and just try to focus on the student because I felt like there was something there. Um, um, and instead of just trying to negate, he, he tried to negate everything I was saying, but he was brilliant. And he had his mind of his own, and most of all, his tenaciousness reminded me of my own. When the bell rang, I immediately felt failure, and I felt that I failed my goal of reaching this young man and changing his perception on the importance of health. While packing my things up, he approached me and demanded my name and asked me if he could shake my hand. He looked deeply into my eyes and said, you really care, don't you? After all these months, you're the first one, thank you. It's the few moments I've had while teaching has shown me that sometimes sincerity can make a difference, which is not something that can be taught. Moments like these have fueled my passion to become a physician because the field needs me as much as I need it. And that was essentially it. Um, it was a moment in my second year that really stuck out to me. And, you know, I thought it was a great story, you know, um, like I thought it's the one that I always thought about. And I remember being extremely disappointed in myself, but you know, I just had to, you know, he saw the sincerity. And I think that's the biggest advice I could give to every, anybody on this call is to just follow your heart and do what you want to do. And in the end, you'll, you'll be where you need to be. But you just got to find what you like and just pursue that. Awesome. So that's a good segue into my next question, which is um, working in healthcare. Healthcare can be complicated, as Jasmine attested. It can be, you know, a lot a lot of information, as Paris said. Um, what is what is most rewarding about pursuing a career in health and what you do? I can hop in. I, I think I alluded to this earlier, is that there's a lot of ways to make an impact. Um, and I think most people think about, if I want to make an impact in health or in healthcare, or make the world a healthier place, that, that I have to go be a doctor or a nurse or a care provider. Um, but there's a lot of ways to improve health on the policy side, on the business side. Um, so I think impact is a huge piece as the rewarding. And then I think the other is that if you have like a mindset of, uh, I want to make the world a better place or I want to improve something or like I want to take something that is broke and fix it. Uh, there's a lot of industries that are more along the lines of like, let's, let's go from like 95% to 96%. But healthcare right now is at like 20%. And there's a long way for, for us to go. So if you have a mindset of like, okay, if we get the right people in here and we do the right things and we kind of uh, overhaul uh, a lot of what's been done, um, there's a lot of room for improvement here. And there's a lot of white space for for ideas and, and new, new ways of thinking about stuff. Um, and we can see, specifically in the US, we can see other countries that are doing it better. So if you have this mindset of like, I want to fix something or like, 
I want to go after this industry that has a ton of ton of space to grow and improve, then healthcare is awesome for that. Um, yeah, I 100% agree. There's a lot of room for improvement. Um, and healthcare, I think, is also kind of uniquely situated between all of these other social sectors, um, housing and education and um, access to food and things like that, that are all so critical. So I think if you, if you really care about a lot of these different issues, the healthcare field is really trying to, to innovate and engage with all of these other sectors, which is, it's a really cool moment for healthcare right now to see that happening. Um, and I also think that it's rewarding in part because I think we can all kind of think of examples from our own lives where healthcare has significantly impacted ourselves or someone that we know, um, either positively or not. And to be able to say that, that, at least for myself, that I'm contributing to something that I've seen impact so many of, you know, my friends from high school in my community is, I think, really powerful and continues to um, drive me forward, even though health is very complicated and challenging sometimes. Um, yeah, I think given the ability to just help people in their time of need and just, you know, um, promote healthcare is amazing. Like I mentioned before, it's all about just promoting health. And I think healthcare is the most um, selfless thing you can be a part of, you know, truthfully. Um, and specifically with medicine, like, it's crazy the amount of power and the amount of respect and the amount of change that you can make, like, as a physician or someone in healthcare. Um, yeah, just a few weeks ago, like, there was someone having a seizure and I was, like, the most qualified person in the area. And I was expected to help even as a first year medical student um you know and just being able to have that power and that ability to help is like so humbling it, it's crazy um again since you're all coming from different areas of the healthcare sector what's a common misconception about working in the health industry I would say like being the business person, uh, the idea that like the for-profit nature of it means that the people that work on the business side are like evil or corrupt or, you know, bad people. Um, I've, I know a ton of people that I work with that are as passionate about improving the healthcare system as Jasmine or Paris are. Um, and just because the U S is like for-profit and it's a very messed up system and there are people that are not, good actors doesn't mean that like anyone that's working in healthcare uh, on the business side has like a, a cold heart and is trying to, you know, separate patients from their, from their money. Um, a, a, what isn't a misconception about healthcare is that a lot of the dollars and a lot of the um, decisions are, are made by a very kind of uh, specific and like non-diverse group. So it, it, there's this this talk in in healthcare and private equity called like the 40 year old white guy problem, and the idea is that some of the biggest health issues in this country are facing folks that are on Medicaid or come from um, you know diverse populations, and the people that are making the decisions, the, the people that run the hospitals, the people that run the insurance companies, have no real ability to connect with those communities and no real ability to understand the social determinants of their health. Um, and so that unfortunately isn't a misconception, but hopefully over time we'll start to kind of, uh, people will start to realize that if you're going to have good decision making, if you're going to make, uh, if you're going to improve the system, that, that leadership has to come from folks that understand it and are on the sort of ground floor and, and know those communities. Yeah. Um, I definitely agree. Um, I also agree to the point that not all for-profit People are bad. I, I dabbled in for profit. It's okay. <laughs> um, but I, th I think um, to add to that, I think a common misconception from my perspective is that healthcare is siloed. And I kind of alluded to this earlier, but if, you know, Paris as a clinician sends someone home and says, you know, you have type 2 diabetes, you know, take this drug and eat right, but they have no access to healthy food or they can't afford it and they don't have any refrigeration for their medication, that advice is meaningless, but that's a housing issue and that's a zoning issue. 
you know? And so I think people think, okay, you just tell people eat right and you, you know, create, you know, longer gym times for students or something like that. And that's not the case. It's incredibly collaborative and that's definitely a, a pro of healthcare and it's also a challenge. I think for me, a common misconception is that getting to medical school is the end all be all. And <laughs> once you become a physician, that's it. Um, it's not that at all. You know, um, your goal should be to just constantly keep on learning and keep on growing. Um, you'll never be perfect. And also, you just want to keep on living your life like for today. Also, be happy in the moment. A lot of times we put off things for later and say, you know, I'll be happy once I'm a doctor. Like it's over for you guys then um, when it's not it's not the truth. We have to be happy now. And not only will that make you happier, it's going to make you connect to your patients better and make them happier as well. We don't have to sacrifice our own health or give up all of ourselves to be um, in healthcare. I think that's something that a lot of people do. And I'm happy to see it's finally changing where, you know, us being healthy is just as important as well. Awesome. Um, so I have one more question for you guys. Um, and then we still have a few minutes. So if, if folks want, I know there has been some chat going on, but if folks want to chat, questions or you can email me if you're on the phone gpressman at purehealthexchange.org um, and I'll field in the last few minutes I'll field some of those questions um, but my last question for you all is ooh, um, what single factor will have the greatest impact on the healthcare industry over say the next decade what do you think it will be or what do you hope it will be I think it, it really is that understanding of the social determinants of health, which Pure Health Exchange is so core to. I saw a really funny quote, and I'm going to completely botch this. Um, actually, I'm going to look. At, I'm going to. I'll grab it really quickly. But basically, it compares um, the social determinants of health to uh, teenage sex, and it basically it says, uh, "Where is it? It's very funny. I promise it's you know appropriate." Where is it? But it's basically like, okay, here it is. Social determinants of health is like teenage sex. Everyone's talking about it. Nobody really knows how to do it. Everyone thinks everyone else is doing it. And so on, everyone claims they're doing it, um, which I just <laughs> think is hilarious. Um, but I think that getting back to my actual point, the understanding and the uh, kind of intertwining between policy and healthcare delivery uh, in regards to understanding what is actually determining people's health and what sort of unchangeable truths about how society is constructed currently are, is affecting people's health will be a huge factor as to whether we're a much healthier country in 2029 20, than we are now. That's a deep question. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> I Paris, you got this. I was just gonna say the election, but here you here, now you made it ten years. <laughs> ten years, yeah. I'll be a doctor in ten years. Maybe I could change some things <laughs> by then. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm just gonna be super repetitive and say again to the social determinants of health idea. It needs to just be more collaborative, and I think, as you know, I don't know. I think people who have been a part of PHE really understand the intersection of how all of these different social systems are working together or aren't working together. Um, and I think from where I sit, I think there's a lot of movement in the direction of systems talking to each other and people really collaborating and thinking critically about issues um, from a historical perspective and um, kind of analyzing the current state of systems outside of the traditional silos. Um, so that's happening. Um, I think just kind of innovative thinking in general. I think people are getting really excited about saying like, how can we involve startups and technology and all of that kind of stuff into healthcare? And that's pretty exciting for patient care. Um, but I, I really just think as new, new generations of people who are interested in healthcare are kind of getting involved with new fresh ideas is just always a good, a good move. Awesome. Um, okay, so there's so I wanted to actually go back in the chat. Um, Paris was having a doing some mentoring on the side while we were having this, and um, there was a question about um, kind of accessing connections to learn um, about research and opportunities to learn about getting into med school. And Paris's suggestion was um, 
talk to your teachers. They are there and have more resources than we think, which I think is good. Um, and I think also participation, thinking about summer enrichment programs or other enrichment programs. Um, do you have any more thoughts on that on Paris, especially in the med school question? It's just like, how can you, you know, get access to some of these enrichment opportunities? Yeah, you know, um, I feel like the medical field and medical school is like super hyper competitive process. And a lot of times we don't share our experiences. Um, honestly, I think the best thing you could do is try to find a mentor, just cold call, send emails to medical students and just go to conferences. I think a lot of my um, big moments and where I found mentors were at conferences, whether it be local or going to another city. And that might not be easy for everyone, but just just keep on sending it. All it takes is one person for you to um, you know get that connection. And then from there, your foot is in the door. But there's so many opportunities out there. It's just a lot of times we're not able to find it. But the summer enrichment programs are what changed my life and showed me that I could actually be like a doctor. And, you know, they kind of gave me the, um, the roadmap of like what I had to do. Cool. And you guys could email me too. Like, I don't know if I can put my email address on this, but I will. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, there's another question in the chat from Sarah who wants to bring PHE to her city, which is so awesome. Um, and we can follow up Sarah more specifically on that. I do want to say that like, this is, a, this is an area where that, that comment before about using your network is key, you know? So like, you know, maybe even before you write a proposal or like think about that, we don't quite have a formal proposal process yet for considering PHE cities, although maybe one day. Um, just talk to us, email us, we'll connect you to the right person, we'll have a conversation. So it's like starts with a conversation can be a great way to um, any sort of entry point, whether it's career or amazing opportunities like bringing PHE to your city. So um, that's one thing to think about. Um, so maybe just, we only have three more minutes left. Um, so we just want to like, share as a, maybe as a final thought, um, what, uh, what advice are, would you give for it? You know, let's think about, you know, somebody who maybe is in PHE currently and is like thinking about maximizing their time, um, in PHE and using it as best as possible as they, as they think about their career. So what advice would you give for current volunteers who are currently engaged with peer health exchange? Talk to staff. The staff are awesome. I love PHE staff. They're amazing and incredibly supportive of anything that you want to do and, if, and incredibly well-connected people. Um, and if you just want to bounce ideas off of them of like, oh, I'm really interested in health policy or whatever. Do you know anybody? I think that's a great starting point to kind of, you know, cold calling is also really helpful, but leverage your PHE networks first and, um, talk to alum about how to write your resume so that you're really showcasing your, all of the skills that PHE um, has taught you. Um, but yeah, staff, staff, staff. I want to echo that, Jasmine. Um, I know I'm not a formal panelist, but I would encourage any current PHE volunteer to think beyond their actual site. Um, PHE is a national nonprofit and all of our bios are up on the website. So if you have a specific interest, um, I would very much encourage you to go through and read the bios of anyone at PHE. Our emails are on there. And um, if you say you're a PHE volunteer and you're interested in chatting, I think that would go over pretty well. Yeah, it's awesome. Everyone's yeah, super cool. Uh, my advice would be to take on, you know, if, if possible, take on a leadership role within the organization, whether that's an LC or a CC. I think that experience is going to be really relevant for a ton of entry-level roles and there's not a lot of volunteer organizations likely on a campus that give you that same amount of kind of structure and management experience. Um, so I think that's super valuable. And again, I'm going to put my email in the chat. If anyone is interested in Oxian, happy to talk more. Um, always be recruiting, you know. Yeah, I think my advice would be like previously mentioned is just leveraging your networks. I think it's really important. Um, there's not a moment where you have so many people surrounded and so much context surrounded around you and just use peer health exchange. There's so many people doing so many different things. And a lot of times we do get limited to one city, but it is a national organization. And I personally wish I would have reached out more. And the main thing is just to be the best that you possibly could be. Um, you know, just try to set your own goals um, in terms of what you want to do. And also within the organization, you know, 
teach as many workshops as you can, you know, try to, you know, condense things, take them in your own way. Just, just keep better. If you keep that mentality, whatever you apply it to later, it's going to just be great for you, you know. Awesome. What a great note to end on. Um, I will share out with you all. Um, we are, you know, to this point about leveraging our networks, we are starting to build a alumni community and that's both locally in each of our cities and nationally. Um, we are starting to, you know, for example, build an online community where you can go and just be able to find, um, contact information about alum across the country that you can have that coffee chat with to learn more about their career field. Um, so we are trying to do that. And so we'll be in touch about next steps with that. Um, and thank you so much for our panelists for sharing their experiences and your stories and cool quotes and uh, transcripts of their personal statements. That's so wonderful. Um, thank you all so much. We'll be in touch, hopefully to build this community with you all and have a wonderful night. Perfect. Good night, everyone. Thanks so much. Don't be afraid Bye. to reach out. Bye. <laughs> Bye.